a self-taught guitarist, meaning that I've never taken an in-person guitar lesson. Everything I've learned has been from YouTube, from watching videos, and from mostly learning my favorite songs and riffs. Thinking back on my guitar journey, I can pinpoint certain riffs that really taught me a lot and improved my playing, and have still continued to influence my playing many years later. So today I'm going to show you five of the riffs that taught me guitar and talk about what I learned from each one. And just quickly before we get into it, I want to say thank you to Moore Audio for sponsoring this video. I'm using their new SD30i Intelligent Amplifier for all the tones in this video, and I'll tell you more about it in a little bit. For now, let's get into the first riff. So you probably recognize that riff. It is the main riff from Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. And it is probably one of the first riffs a lot of beginners learn when they're starting out on electric guitar. But it actually has a surprising amount of complexity if you really try to get it to sound like the original recording. At first glance, this riff seems really simple, just four power chords. But the way they're played and the rhythm, the feel, is a bit more complicated than it might seem when you're just starting out and trying to learn it. If you were just starting out, you might play it something like this. But that is missing a lot from the original, and I remember struggling to get it to sound right when I was learning it. To make the riff sound better, you need to add in left hand muting in between the power chords just by resting your fingers across the strings and getting kind of a clicky sound like this. And when you figure that out and put them in between the chords, it starts to sound a lot better. And I remember being super excited when I figured that out and really got it down. And also on an even more basic level of muting, this riff helped me a lot to get down my power chord changes because when you go from here to here, you need to mute the low E string with your index finger so that you don't have that happen. When you're playing the power chord here, you want it to sound like this, not that. So this riff helps a lot with muting in general. And once you have the muting down, there's even a little more complexity that you might miss when you're just starting out. So you might have something like this. But then you might listen a little more and realize there are some open string hits going on between the chord changes. And that immediately makes it sound cooler and just better in general. And I remember being really excited when I discovered that as well. The whole song in general is just a great one to learn starting out. I remember learning the solo and it was a really easy solo to learn, but it's very melodic and memorable. And I think it gives a good foundation for learning more solos in the future. So yeah, I just recommend learning the whole song really. And now onto the next riff. <laughs> So that was the main riff from Poison by Alice Cooper, and it's a great one to get down, especially because of the string skipping. I think when I started learning this riff, it was the first time I had really worked on string skipping at all, and I remember being really tricky to get it down. String skipping is when you have a note on one string, and then the next note you play is more than one string apart, so there is a gap in the strings between the notes, and it can get tricky, and it's really easy to fumble over and accidentally hit the wrong string when you're doing this. <laughs> So learning this riff really helped me get down string skipping a lot better. I also remember at the time struggling with this stretch here between these notes. Just getting my pinky out there and it is a pretty big stretch and I think it was probably the biggest stretch I had really tried to play in riffs at the time so it definitely helped me there as well. When I was learning this riff I also ended up learning the whole song and I ended up learning the ending solo of the song by ear because there weren't really any lesson videos or tabs and that was quite difficult for me at the time but it helped me get started really trying to critically listen to songs I was learning. Now quickly before I get into the next riff let me take a moment to tell you about the really cool amplifier I'm using in this video. This is Moore's SD30i. It's a digital modeling amplifier that uses Moore's awesome effects modeling technology to give you a huge range of different tones. There are 52 included amp models and 49 different effects, so you can totally customize things to your liking and you will never run out of tones. It's a 30 watt stereo amp and it sounds great in the room and it gets plenty loud. I actually have it turned down quite a bit because it's too loud for my small studio room space. The amp has a USB-C output so that you can plug it into your computer or smartphone and record the audio from the amp directly to your computer or phone, and that's what I've been doing in this video. You can of course use the amp plugged into a power source, 
but it actually also has a built-in rechargeable battery that lasts for up to five hours of playback. So you can just grab the amp and go wherever you want and not have to worry about plugging it in. I think that's a really cool feature. It also has built-in Bluetooth functionality so that you can play back any song you want from your phone to the amp by just connecting via Bluetooth and you can jam along to songs or backing tracks that way. On the amp itself, there are controls that let you switch between four different presets and a bunch of different amp models and modify effects. But if you want to really customize those four presets and switch between a bunch more as well, you'll want to use the app. The app has been really easy for me to use so far. You just connect to the amp and then you'll have a bunch of different presets that you can switch between and you can also customize those entirely. There is just so much flexibility here that I'm sure you'll find tones or make tones that you really like. There are also some useful built-in features like a metronome that just plays back through the amp itself. There's also a drum machine that you can customize and that plays back through the amp as well so you can jam along to it. There's also a built-in tuner which is super useful and then there is a built-in looper as well. So yeah I've had a great time with the ST30i so far. I think it's a really cool option to consider if you're looking for a pretty portable practice amp that can be used on the go for practice and recording and you can also jam along to backing tracks with Bluetooth. So if you're interested in learning more I'll have a link in the description. Thank you again to Moore for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel in general. I really appreciate it. All right now on to the next riff. <laughs> The main riff from The Trooper by Iron Maiden is obviously a classic and one I am glad I learned pretty early on in my guitar journey. It really helped me to get down my hammer-ons and pull-offs a lot better than I ever had before and it's just a really fun riff to play as well. The intro riff also has a harmony part that comes in part way through. So learning it just really got me started thinking about harmony parts and how I could incorporate them into my own playing. And going beyond just that intro riff, there is also a huge galloping section in this song, so that helped me a lot to get down that technique as well. So I definitely learned a lot from this riff and from this song, so it's another one I'd recommend learning if you're getting started with metal guitar. Alright, for this next riff, we need a new guitar in D standard tuning. Yeah, I just love that riff. It is the main riff from Cerise by Ghost. I think in general, if I had to name a band that has influenced my guitar playing the most, it would be Ghost. I have probably learned the most Ghost riffs of any other band. At the time when I was learning this riff, I hadn't really played many riffs that had the low string palm muted chug in between hitting other chords and notes. And learning this really helped me solidify that technique and it's something I use all the time now. When I first learned this riff, I didn't play it quite the same way. I think I played it more like this. Which still sounds pretty close, but basically I wasn't doing octaves and I was playing the open E instead of the E power chord here at one point in the riff. But yeah, it still works totally fine and it's another riff that you can kind of build upon as you learn more and really listen to the song. In the song there's actually a second guitar playing a harmony part, which is pretty much the same, but just a little bit different. It goes like this. So you just get this octave here instead of and combine they sound really cool together. I think it's also a good riff to get used to jumping around the fretboard quickly because you have to kind of move around a lot. So I think it can be useful for that sort of coordination as well. And for the next riff we need another guitar. <laughs>
So that was the opening from System of a Down's Hypnotize and it is actually still pretty tricky to play. The way I learned to play it involves a lot of inside picking where you're moving your pick back and forth between two strings staying inside the gap between them. So it's going back and forth like this and that is actually pretty tricky. It's easy to get tripped up and I still sometimes mess up while doing inside picking. Now you could also play this a bit differently. You could use all down picking and I believe that is how the band actually plays it live from looking at some live videos. So you could just kind of down pick every note like that, but I found that pretty tricky to do up to speed and I thought that inside picking felt more comfortable, kind of comes down to personal preference. You could also use outside picking, I guess, where you're picking only outside the strings instead of inside the gap between them, so like this. But again, I thought that inside picking just fit better. I remember working on this for a very long time to get it down and it was definitely worth it because it's still a technique I use in my playing. It's still something I work on now and again when I'm playing things now. So yeah, definitely valuable to get down. There you have it, five of the riffs that taught me guitar. I think I learned something valuable from each one and there are actually a bunch more I think I could include in this list. So let me know if you're interested in a part two. Also, let me know which riffs taught you guitar, which ones you think you learned the most from as you were starting learning the instrument. I'd be curious to hear. Thank you again to Moore Audio for sponsoring the video and sending me out the SD30i that I've been using. I really enjoy playing with this amp and if you're interested in learning more, as I said, there will be a link in the description. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.